What's up, everybody? I'm Nathan Crane. I'm Derek Crane. We are the co-founders of Crane Factor and the hosts for the Activating Greatness podcast. So today, we're going to be diving into a number of different topics, depression, anxiety, challenges in our lives, things that keep us down and you know, maybe prevent us from working towards achieving our goals or things that maybe kick us off our path a little bit and, you know, give us new life experiences and life lessons, if you will. And also what we can do about getting back on track, what we can do about overcoming depression, what we can do about, you know, making sure that we are um, living the life we really want to live and really activating that greatness within ourselves. So I'm actually going to be interviewing Derek today in this podcast. He's gone through some challenges recently as well as some, you know, big awakenings. Um, We're going to share all that with you, get into the nitty gritty. So stay tuned. All right, Derek, so here we are. No computer, no notes, no yeah. plan. <laughs> um, except we're just going to kind of go off the cuff and I'm going to ask you some questions. Cool. And you're going to share your experience with our viewers and listeners with you know, the hopes that you know, we can uh, help you in your life or you can take this and help someone else in their life. So let's go back a little bit. So you've been having some challenges. For a while, mm-hmm. I don't know how long, um, and I don't, and I don't even know exactly what. You know, I could tell you were going through some stuff, yeah. um, inner work, inner challenges. You know, mm-hmm. emotional stuff. I don't know if it was depression, if it was mm-hmm. anxiety, if it was um, you know lack of purpose or what. But why don't you mm-hmm. share with us? Yeah, what's what's been going on, and how long has it been going on? Open up the book. We're going to open it right up. We're going to dig right in and we're going to pull it out. Uh, Oh, so I'd say probably about on and off six, seven months, probably around, probably around that time frame. When I think, when I think about the root, because that's what, that's the work that I've been doing. And maybe you don't even know where that depression or anxiety even comes from. So if you get past the surface of it and not just flow through that stream and you can find and you can find the root then then you can do the work and the healing that it takes to get from there so you know around when i think back around that time frame it was right right when uh i got out of a relationship mm-hmm. when i well when i think about that so that's kind of my aha moment mm-hmm. it's like oh okay so there's there's work there's which work anyone that. who's ever been in a deep <laughs> relationship knows that you know breaking up a relationship can be depressing can be yeah. challenging can yeah. you know pull up some old wounds can you know do a lot of different things right can definitely yeah. do some damage yeah yeah most definitely so yeah that's the that's the the awakening part of it and so yeah definitely going through going through that depression anxiety that that comes from that and just finding that you know maybe maybe masking the surface of it without without even realizing it or intentionally doing doing that noticing that you know it's hurt hurting myself more than more than anything Um, so you were you were inside feeling pain depression sadness yeah but outside you were trying to show the world that you were fine yeah uh, kind of like a robin williams <laughs> you know yeah you know to robin rest williams. in peace yeah yeah, yeah. or wherever you are uh, yeah. spirit soul of robin williams amazing man that yes. made everyone laugh so much but had so many inner depression problems i mean that's the thing right so many people who hold stuff in and don't know how to internalize it, don't know how to communicate it, don't feel comfortable showing that to others. You know, you look at a lot of movie stars, as Robin Williams as you know, an example, that mm. they do that for long periods of time. What happens? They end up, you know, getting into drugs, they end up getting into addiction, they end up getting into fights, going, you know, ending up in jail or prison or, you know, breaking up relationships or losing their career or a lot of different things, right? Yeah. Because they internal because they're not learning how to deal with and heal and express those emotions. Mm-hmm. 
So true. So what were some of the things you were going through? What were some of the inner experiences? Because on the outside, yeah, you seemed, you know, happy, great. I mean, there were times it was like, yeah, I could tell something's going on. But um, obviously under the surface, something deeper was going on. So what, what was it? What were the thoughts you were having? What was the experience, the, the depression? The, let's take you back there, see if we can make you cry today. <laughs> Just kidding. It's already about to happen. <laughs> the, uh, I'm sure I will. The... When when I, when I think back about it, because this is the first time, this is really the first time that I'm even like doing the work of it. So talk about just opening Why up I'm there, here with you, the first time. Here and we just go. Open up, come on in. <laughs> it's the real world right here. So in internally, probably what what you had said rang rang a bell right when you had said it. Um, lack lack of purpose, like when when you're built when you're building towards something and see and and see everything in that kind of future mindset when you're building towards that and then that kind of just goes crumbling away then that purpose is like well what's my purpose now where Mm -hmm. where is all this motivation and inspiration now going to lead me towards so that lack of purpose was uh, I, i would say i would say that so it's kind of almost feeling um floaty in a sense mm-hmm. without being without being grounded yeah it, yeah so that's that's where that's where that's at still i mean still still motivated still internally like inspired within within myself to do good you know never, never to never to really harm um anybody in general and just that uh, and the, I got into boxing, but the, the other person at the other end understands that, okay, we're getting into this. <laughs> well, that was a, that was your, that, that became your therapy, right? I mean, yeah, it was very quickly after the breakup, session. then you immediately signed up for a boxing gym. Yeah, which, which I'm, I'm very grateful. I have had a lot of growth and amazing experiences. If you can't tell, you got a little black eye from sparring with sparring. a pro yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All in good fun. <laughs> Wait, that, that's relative, right? I don't want you. I don't want anyone punching me in the face. I wouldn't call that fun. But, but all, hey, to eat to eat their own. Honestly, we're all laugh. We we laugh afterwards and give and give a hug afterwards. That's where there's not you know bad bad intentions right, involved. In right, right. You guys train together. You train spend time together. together. Want each other to grow. Your friends, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Community sense, but, but you know, then then I think about that too. Um, lost lost a sense of community in that sense too mm, when i you were went part when, of when, the gym when suddenly that, i just thought when i just thought about that next yeah. through um so i mean community is huge in in life something that i'm realizing which you know going not to jump too far forward but where there's where you can figure out the root well then that's also the solution so you know like lack of purpose so then now now my work is to figure out that purpose figure out my purpose figure out the the driving motivation uh lack of community okay so then now the solution is to find community um you know in 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 a healthy growing way Mm -hmm. just kind of doing the work out loud Mm -hmm. right now yeah yeah, no, that's that's great sharing your thought process. I mean, that's 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 part of how we heal and part of how we grow, right? So we go inside and ask, what's going on? Why did this occur? Where did this come from? You know, what's the deeper root of what's going on? And you find that, and then typically what your thought process was is then you do the opposite of it. Yeah. Feeling lack of fur- purpose, find a purpose. Find something that gives you meaning and drive. Feeling lack of connection and community, find a community you can connect with that helps you grow. Right. Yeah. So, but you have to go inside first and find out what's going on. And it sounds like in the beginning, um, even until now, six, seven, eight months later, that you mm-hmm. didn't go inside to find out. Yeah. Right. It was just you're feeling the pain, you're feeling it, you're, you know, and, and naturally, like you found boxing, you found a community, you found an outlet, a release, mm-hmm. a way to kind of give yourself a little therapy, right? Punching is like, dealing with the anger and the sadness, right? It's like you're getting out there and it's like you're hitting something and you, and you know, you're a very physical person, very active person, you love to exercise, so it, so it fulfills that need too. 
then you meet a community of people who support each other, you're fulfilling that need. You're doing all that subconsciously. You're yeah. finding solutions without even thinking about it because you've been doing a lot of this work for a long time. Yeah. It just guided you there. You know, um, what, I would, what I would say is when you're going through those challenges, when you're feeling depressed, when you have, you know, I'll give an example in my own life. Um, a few years ago, I had something similar, but it wasn't with, uh, wasn't with a woman or a partner. It was with uh, a dream of creating a festival. Right, and so I wanted to create this huge festival, make it super successful, help thousands of people. It was a big conscious music, sober health festival. Right, you were there at Unify Fest. Mm -hmm. It was about, you know, inspiring people, education. It was about music, dancing, community, about sustainability, all these great things that I appreciate and enjoy, mm -hmm. and uh, and went really huge the first year uh, towards this dream with, you know, some fear and also just having to find that inner confidence that you know it's going to work out even though um, a lot of signs were pointing like well maybe it's not going to work out <laughs> you know and dealing with the fear of that and dealing with not having you know i mean hundreds of thousands of dollars committed to put this thing on and um, and not really having the financial backing for that and so is this you know years i mean a couple of years of hard work labor you know 12, 14 hours a day, every day, putting in towards this dream, towards this goal, towards this project. And this wasn't well, a relationship with one person I was creating. This was a relationship with hundreds of people I was creating. I mean, I was talking to every artist, every musician, every speaker, every leader that was a part of it on the phone all the time, emailing on their booking agents, all that stuff, making all these commitments and, um, and creating all these relationships with people that I you know, genuinely care about genuinely appreciate and genuinely want to support and then you know festival happens and the last day is over and it's like oh my god we didn't make the money we needed to make to pay everybody mm -hmm. and it was just like totally devastating mm -hmm. because all of a sudden I went from having like 200 people who loved me you know because like everyone told me this is the most amazing festival ever this was the best experience of our lives this was you know we had 2,000 people there you know, the 200 people I'm talking about are like all the musicians, the artists, the presenters, all that. You know, and I mean, literally hundreds of people told me it's like the best festival they've ever been to. So we created this amazing thing that totally like brought community and changed people's lives. And then at the end of it, it was like, oh my God, it can't pay any of us who put so much time and energy into this and all the people. And so it went from all these people loving me to all these people hating me that quick yeah. you know and so it was it wasn't one breakup it was like 200 breakups so my point is is the next week after uh, I went into depression mm -hmm. and just like you know really really like oh my god what am I gonna do I have all this debt I have all these people that hate me I have you know this intention to want to take care of everybody and pay them and yeah I made mistakes in this I need to learn from them but it's like in that moment, you don't want to learn from your mistakes. You want to just fix the problem, or at least I do. Yeah. You know, because um, so during that week of depression, what I did, and this is what I suggest you do, is accept that you're in depression. Mm. And it was probably the fifth day, fifth or sixth day. And I just like, you know, I just went inside and said, you know what? I'm totally feeling depressed. And then I talked about it. And I mm. told people I'm depressed. Mm. People said, how are you doing? You know, usually like, oh, I'm good. You try to mask it? Yeah. No, I learned from over the years. It's like, don't pretend you're, you're feeling some way you're not. So when people ask me, I say, you know, honestly, I'm pretty shitty. You know, I'm <laughs> feeling really depressed. I just yeah. had one of the hardest experiences of my life and I'm figuring out how to deal with it. Mm. And so just that alone, that acceptance of it, that speaking about it, that opening up about it starts removing you from the you know, the, the secrecy of it. Mm. The secrecy of something is what keeps you attached to it. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, I went through a lot of drug addiction growing up, right? And the secrecy of it keeps you attached to it. You know, not never admitting that I had addiction problems, never admitting, always trying to hide it from your parents or from the police or from whoever, right? It's like the secrecy of it, one, means that what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing. But two, it also means that you're attached to it and um and not able to come out i mean you come out and say yeah i've got a drug problem i've got you know and i i want to fix it and i need to know how to get over it right mm -hmm. it's like just that opening up that awareness that acceptance of it is the biggest first step anybody can take in any kind of 
depression situation. Yeah. The next step from there for me was, so, you know, a week in, yep, I'm depressed. Just be with it. Allow it. Accept it. Like, I didn't try changing it right away. I didn't try. I gave it a few more days. You know, by the end of that first week or maybe it was a week and a half, I finally said, okay, that's enough. I'm done feeling sorry for myself. These people are going to hate me. They're going to be mad at me. They're, you know, I'm getting collection notices. I'm getting threats from attorneys and all this stuff, right? And, um, and it was just like, there's nothing I can do right now. It's like, I, don't, I can't take a loan. All my credit cards are maxed out. I can't borrow money from anyone. I borrowed from everyone who, who I possibly can. And it was just like, there was literally nothing I could do except sit back and just stop feeling sorry for myself and say, you know what? They're going to hate me. doesn't matter. I have to move forward with my life. Mm. I have to move forward and find a solution to take care of my family because we're losing our house. We're losing our vehicles. Mm. We're, you know, 200000 Well, at that time, it was over half a million dollars in debt, mm. right? Um, and, and it was just like, and I've got a wife and kids and, you know, I have to take care of. And it was just like, Okay, I figure out how to take care of myself and my family right now, and I'll figure out how to solve this huge problem, you know, later. And so it was going inside and really honoring yourself and making yourself a priority and saying, look, you know, time to change. And then I did. And then it was just like, okay, now I'm focused on solutions. What can I do to feel better? Okay, go to my practices, do my meditation. Do my qigong, do my yoga, do my positive affirmations in the morning, watch positive things, learn how to get out of debt, watch YouTube videos, right? And it was like, start becoming solution-minded. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's still a challenge and a problem I'm still dealing with now and, and little by little chipping away at it. Um, but internally, like, it just doesn't bother me anymore, you know? It's like, I know I'm doing the right thing, I know I had the right intention, I know I made mistakes. I've learned from those mistakes and I haven't made those mistakes again. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've learned a lot from them and you know, continue moving forward. And, and I will take care of every agreement in person I ever promise anything to, because you know, that's who I am. So I know that about myself. So now it's like, okay, great. I can continue moving forward with my life mm -hmm. and, uh, and figure out solutions as I keep moving forward. But the pro going back to the point, the problem a lot of us face, a lot of people face is when you're feeling that depression or you're feeling those emotions, hiding it inside and not communicating it. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to communicate it. Yeah, a full, full on acceptance. That there was, around that time frame was right about when you started running too, right? After? Yep. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm exactly, just and that was that was something that was like needed to get some sense of exercising otherwise that energy can kind of feel like it can be still like it can like yeah. not move and actually physically moving in a in a healthy way i just i just was recalling that. it's a good it's a good point you bring up because exercise is one you know one of my early mentors arturo he he told me he said one of the fastest ways to get out of depression is go exercise go move your body mm -hmm. you know it's like get your energy moving get your mind moving get your endorphins running get your dopamine flowing and naturally it was like i just start i i very quickly um decided i'm gonna run an ultra marathon mm -hmm. I never ran a marathon. <laughs> I never ran a half marathon. I never did, you know, I, I wasn't even running at all. I was like running a mile a week or something. Yeah. But knowing my brother <laughs> makes perfect sense. <laughs> and I was just like, out of that, you know, out of that ash, out of all that trauma, because I was traumatized from that, right? Yeah. My solution at the moment was I'm going to run an ultra marathon. So I, I, uh, I signed up for one and I committed to one that was like six months or eight months down the road. And, and I didn't consciously know at the time exactly why. I just knew that like it was something I needed to do. It was yeah. like I needed to move. I needed to exercise. Um, but more importantly, what I realized later as I reflected on it was I needed something to give me a purpose to work towards, mm -hmm. right? That's, and I'm thinking of this even now as, as you were talking, give me a, a goal. I need to work towards something to take my mind off all this, you know, horrible stuff that's going on. I need to do something for myself that strengthens me. Mm -hmm. And I need to give myself some confidence, right? Because my confidence was shattered after that. Like I had been 
quite successful in business up to that point. I had done a, produced a number of events that were very successful. Um, had a couple of successful businesses. Um, and at that time, I had like a tornado, a hurricane, and a tsunami hit all at the same time. Yeah. You know, it was like uh, I, I was sued, uh, had a festival fail, and lost a company that I was building for a few years that was hugely successful. Like all in the same year, all three things happened. Mm -hmm. And then lost my house and all. So anyway, <laughs> it was like, it was crazy. But signing up for the ultra marathon was just like, give me a goal, give me a purpose, give me something I can work towards and give me something to build my confidence, yeah. right? Because by going and doing something that I had no idea was totally possible, no previous running experience, no real training plan, you know, it was just like, I'm gonna sign up for this thing and I'm gonna do it. And so it was a 35 mile ultra marathon through the mountains, 57 kilometers. And I did it and I finished it and just finishing it. Like I didn't care about winning. I didn't care about time. I didn't care about anything. It was just like, I just want to go finish this thing. Yeah. And the fact, and it was very, very, very hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, mo most people who run a marathon, they, they which is 26.2 miles, you know, on the roads, so it's flat. You don't have elevation climb. You don't have hills. You don't have all that. You know, they're running 50 to 60 miles a week in training. Yeah. Because of my short running time, my short you know, uh, lead up time, my body couldn't handle more than 20 to 25 miles a week. Mm -hmm. So I was running half the amount in training that mm -hmm. people are training with to only run a marathon. I was running half the amount to run an ultra marathon. Yeah. So I don't recommend that to anybody. So it was very painful for me when I you know, got past the halfway mark. But the, the beautiful thing was, the point of the story is that I finished it, I completed it, I made it through like insane challenge. And, and it was just for me, it was like just uh, crossing a finish line. I was like, I did something, I mm -hmm. achieved something. I just like rebuilt that confidence in myself. Like, yeah, I can do really hard stuff. You know, I can, I can face these challenges in life and make it through it. And that boosted my confidence and then opened a whole bunch of other doors down the road, you know, so. We're going we're gonna to run into those challenges in life. We're going to have breakups. We're going to have businesses fail. We're going to have people who hate us. We're going to have haters on YouTube and Facebook that say, you know, you're shitty and you suck and whatever, right? You're <laughs> going to just have these, these things in life. And the, yeah. the, the question is, how are you going to deal with it? Yeah. You know, what steps are you going to take to take care of yourself, to keep your confidence high to heal, you know, depression, anxiety, that kind of stuff. What practices do you have in place and, and, uh, and what are you going to do about it to keep moving forward and activate your greatness within so that you can live the life that, that you really want to live here. Um, and so next question for you, you know, immediately after all, well, you, you ended up having a seizure recently yep. from my, so I'm not a doctor, but my, um, <laughs> my prognosis would be, you know, my, my, my guess was, yeah. you know, going through holding all that depression in for so long, yeah. that anxiety, mm -hmm. um, you know, staying up late at night, you know, doing mm -hmm. things and like when you hold that emotional stuff in, not sleeping well, anxious, you know, all that for six, seven, eight months, and then all of a sudden, boom, something happens physically to try and wake you up. And I think that's why you had that seizure. Mm. You're in the hospital, you know, which was very hard to see you there. It put me in tears as I was leaving the house to come and see you because I hate hospitals. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and I don't want to see any of my friends or, or family there. Yeah. Um, but you came out of that and then you, you did something immediately right after to take action. What did you do? Yeah, went to a Qigong retreat, um, which... Well, I was able to do that because of you, which thank you very, very much. That was a full-on immersive. The, from, from the moment, from the moment that I even got there, I, I knew that this was going to be life transforming. It's the, it's, it's the entire energetics of the, how the whole vibration of the retreat is even set up out into nature at, I'll jump to the last day, I'm gonna be able to also talk about the experience because it's just, it just uh, is, is a light bulb where, so I'm sitting at the table 
still going through the practices and in my own emotional well-being, even doing the humming, doing some of the silence meditation while sitting there and, and having the last meal. And, and someone, someone then uh, opens up conversation with me and says, says, wow, you know, I can, it's fascinating that there was no TVs in any of the rooms. It was the, f it was the first time that I even thought that mm -hmm. there wasn't a TV because mm -hmm. of how much being immersed it was. Every single, every single moment was immersed into energetic work and you know, no, no radio, no TV out in the middle of nature. So that's what I'm saying, bringing it back around that the energetics was just to be, to get, to tune out of, you know, technology to tune into your energetic vibration. Mm. Which, you know, that was something that was the placement of all of it made it so potent. Yeah. So... And it was, you guys were in silence for quite a bit of the retreat, right? It was a seven-day retreat at the Chi Center. The, it was the Pure Consciousness Retreat uh, with Master Ming Tong Gu. Yeah. And it's the first time that this particular part of the teachings has been taught. Uh, normally they do healing intensive retreats and family retreats and, and health professional retreats and things like that. But Pure Consciousness, it's like the first time this was being taught there. In yeah. this regard, so you guys were in silence a lot, doing a lot of meditation, a lot of silent walks, a lot. So what was that experience like for you? Yeah. Did that take you inside? Did that help you get to more of the emotional stuff going on, more centering yourself, finding yourself? Mm -hmm. what, what was that experience like? Yeah, so from literally 7 in the morning until... Nine at night, it was practice. It was, it was practice, whether even walking from walking to um, the Kiva, which is where the practices were, where the where the teachings were, where the Qigong was was practiced. To just even walking to getting uh, food, there was practices that we we were doing in between. So literally from seven to nine in practice, and then you know even. Even up until then, going to sleep because you're not distracted by TV, technology, and that jazz. You're still in practice. So I, I understand the term on, a, on another level of immersive. So yes, to, to answer, it definitely, it definitely just put me there, allowed for me to go into the energetics within, and then also just, just put me there too. Um, and it had this, this blossoming effect. The first... The first two or three days were were actually pretty tough. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like it was you know just just diving in and and really just feeling feeling everything like really uh, probably for the first time in a while just internally feeling really what what was going on within within myself. Um, what were some of those things that you noticed was going on? I would say the. Because I was I was tuning into the vibration that was internally going on, which um, the the anxiety was is probably what is probably what I felt. Mm -hmm. like it, it had because talking about vibrations, you know, is um, it had kind of that kind of feeling mm -hmm. internally talking about talking about the formless with form. <laughs> yeah. Interesting to do, but so that. It was the work was to not just shy it away mm -hmm. or mask it or do anything because right. the work is okay. This is what's going on, like what you said. So then acceptance, okay. So solution being what's going to put me into alignment. The all the practices uh, just again allowed that to blossom. And so what I was feeling internally was that sense of anxiety allowed me to recognize it. And then through the practices throughout the week, allowed me to align to calmness, tranquility, mm. while being in a sense of community. Right. Where everybody's there. Purpose, goals, were being able to align yourself to, you know, your your own natural state of well-being, which the, the entire seven days was practiced around that four days of complete and total silence so not not talking humming we do mm -hmm. and within within the qigong practices doing the qigong practices the four days of being in silence which also you know diving within showed me things to work on 
and then just also being able to get into that alignment so the before was I'd say that my whole entire alignment energetic well-being was definitely shaky mm. and then throughout the whole experience towards the and then at the end of the day I mean I was I was feeling light. I was feeling three stories above cloud nine, like literally, <laughs> like almost skipping from one place to another. <laughs> smile, a natural, a yeah. natural smile, you know, being because everything that I've internally, even subconsciously, been searching for just was there in abundance, mm. in, in an overflowing sense of well-being, community, purpose, connection, everybody working towards. A similar goal, creating pure consciousness. Um, yeah, my heart, my heart right now is naturally smiling from it. Like at the end of it, I was like, "Sign me up, I'm in. I want more." <laughs> and the clear benefit from all of that is that your physical body starts to heal. The vibration of your physical body starts to awaken and align. And you can, you know, people at that retreat who I heard from, you know, digestive issues they've been having for years, like really bad like healed by like the fourth or fifth day and you know all different and and people you know go to these retreats and you know within a week sometimes two or three weeks like you know chronic diseases either reduce in half or completely go away i was at a retreat there in october and there was a man in my group who um by the last day you know he had eight he said he had he lives with level eight pain in his back from a spinal injury every day for years and by the last day of day seven, he said it was in zero pain. Wow. You know, so when you're talking about vibration, you're talking about energy, you're talking about energetics, it's recognizing that we are all energy. Every cell of our body is energy. Every thought, every emotion we have is energy. And, you know, this, the Qigong practice allows you to tune into that energy, allows you to accept the energy that's going on. The blocked energy allows you to awaken your more natural, vital, wholesome self and allow your energy to flow naturally the way we're designed to. Mm-hmm. And that's um, and that's exactly what you needed, right? That yeah. was a week of exactly what you needed. And and now from here, obviously, you'll be taking steps forward to, to keep um, staying aligned, to keep your practice, mm-hmm. right? To, yeah. to uh, keep working towards uh, purpose and goals. It'll be cool to do a follow-up interview like this and... You know, a few months or six months down the road, if you guys want to see that, you know, let, let us know. Put it in the comments below and see where you're at and how your goals have changed, mm-hmm. dreams have changed, if they have, or, you know, purposes or things you've been doing to keep you on, on, on the good track that you've been on for a long time. So um, anyway, we'll end it there. Um, if you're interested in Qigong retreats, we've both been to, highly recommend at the Qi Center. That's chicenter.com. It's Master Ming Tong. You can look him up on YouTube as well. Um, true master teacher of wisdom healing Qigong. And uh, highly recommend that retreat. Also, hope you got some good takeaways from this. This was fun. First time we've ever you know, done something like this on the podcast. Um, if you liked it, let us know. Share it. Tell all your friends about it. Subscribe. Hit that like button and help spread this with others who need to hear this message. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you next week. Appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in.